So this past week, Framework, the maker of the world's most repairable laptop by the end user, had a lot of announcements in a live stream. I believe it was Thursday, question mark, couple days ago though. I do wanna talk about the announcements because a lot of these are really big deals. So for those of you that don't know, Framework makes a laptop. It is a like 13 and a half inch screen laptop. It's pretty basic as far as ultrabooks go. It's nice, thin, has a good screen. Um, yeah, it's, it's a thin and light laptop and they have had this laptop for a couple of years now. Though what's unique about this laptop is it's not only user serviceable, but user upgradable. Like I have a first generation motherboard in this thing and there is currently a second generation motherboard and coming soon, there's gonna be even a third generation of motherboards, but not just from Intel this time from AMD. So the new main boards that were announced, this is a little bit unsurprising, but Intel is on board once again. This time, the new motherboards featured the 1340p, 1360p, and 1370p as the CPU options available. The 1340p is the cheapest of them at $449, and it features four cores, eight threads plus eight efficiency cores. The 1360p has the same core configuration and then the 1370p is a six core 12 thread plus eight additional energy efficient cores for a total thread count of I believe 20 on the 1370p. So that was all somewhat expected because since the first generation framework has used Intel CPUs, but finally, we get some AMD CPUs on board as well. Coming in quarter three, at least that's currently when they're listed as shipping, there's an AMD version of this main board available. And these feature either a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7 CPU. Once again, the starting price for the low end one is $449 for the Ryzen 5 variant of the 740 series. That's gonna be six cores, I believe 12 threads. And interestingly with the Ryzen side of things, our DNA three graphics. So this thing could even do some light gaming reasonably well, especially if you're upgrading from the original motherboards uh, featuring the 11 series of Intel CPUs. This could be a significant GPU upgrade. Additional to the upgrades to the original laptop, uh, users also now have access to a matte display. So originally this was a gloss finish display, which is great for indoor use, but outdoors, not so much, or very bright settings, not so much. So I believe they're actually switching the default over to the matte display, though you'll still be able to get the gloss display uh, through their marketplace. Once again, the way that you get all the spare parts if you ever need to repair or upgrade through the marketplace. They are also offering now a 61 watt hour battery that's up from the old 55 watt hour. That's roughly an 11% increase in capacity, which isn't huge, but it's the same footprint. It fits in the same laptop. So as my battery eventually starts to lose its charge or stops holding the same charge it used to, I can purchase a new and now larger battery and then recycle the old one when that time comes. And then a couple other notable items going along with the idea of reusing parts when I upgrade the main board. They are now releasing a Cooler Master built case for just the main board. So I can turn my old main board into now a desktop PC. Now, Framework already released a 3D printable model of a chassis, but having one that's actually created by Cooler Master it's built in a factory. Uh, the, the quality is likely gonna be higher than most people are able to produce on their at-home 3D printers. This is good. I, I really like that they have a commercially available case for people that don't wanna fuss with 3D printing or taking it somewhere to be 3D printed. Now you can just you know purchase the case. And it's not that expensive. I wanna say it's around $40. I think $39 may have been the actual MSRP. Framework also announced a louder speaker available for the Framework 13. One of the major complaints was that those downfiring speakers just aren't loud enough. Well, you can now get a slightly louder speaker as well. Though they did note that the audio fidelity may not quite be as good with the louder speaker version. But again, having the option is not a bad thing. And then finally, there is a second gen three and a half kilogram hinge. So the hinge on the original was one of the major complaints. So I actually upgraded mine to the four kilogram hinge to make it a much sturdier hinge. Now they have a new generation of a three and a half kilogram hinge that is supposed to be a little bit sturdier, but still allow for one finger lifting of the laptop lid. So all cool there. 
all nice upgrades. The framework 13 is being well taken care of by the company. But then there was more. And you may have seen this, but they announced a Framework 16 laptop. And it's a new chassis. It's not going to use the same motherboards, which is fine because they're basically building an ecosystem for the 16-inch now as well. And it's interesting. So it comes with six expansion card bays instead of the traditional four that the Framework 13 laptop has. Also, it ditches the audio jack completely, though if you want to spend one of your six expansion slots on an audio jack, you can do that. That's one of the appeals of the uh, Framework laptop. That's a new module they're adding in there. For that matter, you could put six audio jacks in it if you really wanted to and to not be able to charge your laptop while they're in there. You can always hot swap them out. Where the Framework 16 starts to get really interesting is with the keyboard and trackpad layout. So they have these spacers on the right and left side of both the keyboard and the trackpad, and you can actually shift the keyboard and trackpad left or right a little bit by moving one of the spacers maybe on the right side over to the left side and putting both spacers on one side. But the reason that that is in place is for the keyboard in particular, if you require a number pad, you can get rid of the spacers and add in a number pad. Then you have your normal keyboard plus the number pad. And when you do that, that obviously shifts your keyboard a little bit to the left from center. A lot of people like their uh, trackpad to be right below the space bar. So then you can follow suit and shift your trackpad over. It allows for a lot of customization of the actual keyboard layout while maintaining the laptop's basic design. It's a pretty cool feature to be honest, provided that, and this will be a sort of a wait till we get our hands on thing provided that it doesn't feel flimsy and there's not a ton of deck flex. I do have my concerns with the spacers and whether or not they're gonna be sturdy and rigid, so we'll have to kind of wait and see on that front, but it is a pretty cool idea. But the big showstopper with the Framework 16 was definitely the revelation that they're gonna have discrete graphics available for these things. And it's basically another expansion slot, except instead of it being on the side of the laptop, it's gonna be kind of at the back part of the laptop where you can kind of like remove the backside here and it slots into the back. And that allows them to have the size of the expansion slot not be restricted by the laptop's frame itself. For instance, if you want a thicker expansion card because maybe you're running a GPU that requires more power and is just a bigger boy, you can make it thicker on the bottom because that'll just lift the laptop back up a little bit and no big deal. So it's a really interesting idea. Expandable graphics has been done before on laptops to lackluster results, we'll call it. But if Framework can follow through with the same fidelity that they followed through with their Framework 13, just with the 16 inch model now, this could actually be the start of something really, really cool. Because basically what you're doing there is you're getting a 16-inch gaming laptop that's also user upgradable. So instead of needing to purchase a new laptop to get better specs, not only can you upgrade the main board with the CPU, but now you could also upgrade the GPU. Which, sure, it's a somewhat limited ecosystem because you know framework is the ones that are selling the the expansion cards but you can go generational upgrades with that sort of thing and that is a really cool idea so these are some of the upgrades that we're going to see from the framework laptop in the coming months the new intel main boards for the 13 come out in i think may the amd ones come out later in the summer maybe early fall at the latest uh, the Framework 16 is still just at the announced phase and we haven't had any hands-on with it. There's been no hands-on footage or anything like that. But of course, that's all going to come down the road. But it's a very exciting time if you're into the Framework ecosystem or maybe you're just looking to get into it and you're thinking maybe now's the time to do that. So that's where we're going to leave it today. Leave comments down below telling me what you think of Framework and its laptop and the direction the company seems to be going. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe, follow all that jazz and I will see all of you in the next video.